two massive machines, one gigantic goal. Provide enough power to make a moon mission happen. Today for our inaugural matchup in the red corner we have the N1. In the red, white and blue corner we have the Saturn V. So let's get ready to rocket rumble! Hello everybody and welcome. It has been more than 50 years ago that a human being set foot onto the surface of the moon for the last time. But only a decade before that it was still not fully clear how to even do that. Just five years before Apollo 17 performed the final moon landing so far, the Saturn V rocket flew for the first time. Today I want to compare it to its Soviet rival, the Raketa Nositel, which is Russian for a launch vehicle, a rocket more commonly known as the N1. I am going to publish a couple of these matchups over the coming weeks and months, so if you want to stay up to date with this Rocket Rumble series, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Can we get this channel to 100,000 subscribers? I say there's a bigger chance than the Soviets landing on the moon before the Americans do. Let's get down to the matchup. And we start with mass and size. At liftoff, the Saturn V weighed in at an impressive 2822 to 2965 tons. More than 2077 tons of that was just a propellant for the first stage. Equally impressive was its height. 111 meters tall and a maximum diameter of 10 meters round off the stats for this beast. Up until SpaceX came along with Starship more than 50 years later, it held the record of tallest rocket ever. But the N1 was no puny little thing either. Its launch mass was 2750 tons. Not as gigantic as the Saturn V, but still very much in the category of super heavy lift vehicle. While it was a bit shorter, only standing 105 meters tall on the launch pad, the N1 easily beat its American rival when it came to girth. With 17 meters at the widest point, it was only the more modern Energia rocket that inched past it with 17.65 meters almost two decades later. It's all well and good to compare, but in the end it doesn't matter how tall, wide or heavy a rocket is. There is a more important metric and it is payload capacity. How much can your heavy lift vehicle get into orbit? That's the real benchmark any launcher is going to be measured by. And here it is a clear-cut victory for the Saturn V. While the N1 was designed to send an impressive 95 tons to low Earth orbit, its American rival to this day still holds the record for greatest payload mass delivered to orbit, 141 tons. In a couple of years, Starship is probably going to beat this record at one point, but the Saturn V's old record still stands. And I just want to mention Energia again because while being a lot more compact than either the N1 or Saturn V, it was able to put 100 tons into orbit. Such a shame it only flew twice. Of course, all of these magnificent machines would have paled against the Sea Dragon had that ever been built. But since it wasn't, the crown still rests firmly on Saturn's head. In order to achieve this milestone, a lot of rocket engineering had to go into the construction of the rocket. And so for the next part of our rocket rumble matchup, let's talk about launching to the moon. Let's compare our rocket rumble contestants from the bottom up. The Saturn V's first stage, also called S1C, was powered by five humongous F1 engines churning out a whopping 34.5 mega newton of thrust in total. The N1's Block A was a completely different design, propelling the rocket into the air with the help of 30 NK-15 engines, who were a lot smaller, but at the same time much more efficient than the Saturn V's engine. More on that a little later. All of these engines generated a combined thrust of more than 45 mega newton. It was the most powerful rocket stage in history, until Starship's Super Heavy Booster broke that record more than 50 years later. So. Let's light those candles! After already 125 seconds, the N1's first stage would be spent and Block B, with 8 NK-15V engines, would take over. Meanwhile, the Saturn V's S1C was still going. Remember the more than 2000 tons of propellant in this stage? 
that lasted for 168 seconds. Now it was time for the second stage, also called S2, to take over and fire up its five J2 engines. Compared to the N1's second stage, it had a lot more endurance. Block B was spent after 120 seconds and the third stage, Block V, would take over with four NK21 engines powering it. Saturn V's S2 would fire for 360 seconds before the third and final stage would take over, S4B. While the N1's stages were all single ignition, S4B would fire two times. While it was on the first of these, the N1's Block V would be spent after 370 seconds having delivered the so-called L3 system to orbit after a total of 615 seconds, just a little over 10 minutes in total. S4B shut down its first burn after 165 seconds, having brought itself, the Command and Service Module and the Lunar Lander Module to low Earth orbit 693 seconds after liftoff, roughly 11 and a half minutes. Let's talk a bit about the N1's L3 system, also called the Lunar Complex. It consists of Block G, the translunar injection stage, powered by a single NK19 engine, Block D, which was used for course corrections and lunar descent, then there was the LK Lunar Lander and the 7K LOK, a Soyuz variant with fuel cells instead of solar panels, a thicker heat shield and other modifications necessary to facilitate the lunar landing mission. For the Apollo missions, there were not as many parts involved. Merely S4B and the rest of its propellant to perform the translunar injection and the already mentioned command and service module as well as the lunar lander. For their respective moon missions, Block G would fire for 443 seconds while the second burn of S4B would be shorter. 335 seconds. In total, both the Saturn V as well as the N1 would fire the engines of their stages for roughly 17 minutes. If you are into numbers and graphs, here's a little chart I made with the burn times for each stage of those two behemoths. If you want to hear more about the lunar landers, here's again the reminder to stay subscribed, because both moon landing concepts deserve their own rocket rumble video. But I said a little earlier that I want to talk more about the engines. F1 versus NK15, open cycle juggernaut versus stage combustion specialist. The approaches for propelling the Saturn V and the N1 couldn't have been more different. Just one F1 engine had a mass of 8.4 tons, standing at more than 5 meters tall with a diameter of 3.7 meters. Just to put this into perspective, that is wider than a Falcon 9 rocket. The F1's dimensions are hard to comprehend, even if you stand right next to it, which I was lucky enough to do a couple of years ago, here with a life-sized Scott Manley for comparison. The NK15, on the other hand, was basically the mass of a small car, just 1.2 tons, standing 3.7 meters tall and 2 meters wide. Don't get me wrong, that's still not a small engine, but it was dwarfed by the F1. On the other hand, the NK15 got its bigger rival beat in two important metrics specific impulse and thrust to weight ratio. Basically, it could lift more compared to its own mass and for longer than the Saturn V's main engine. This came down to the different approach to engineering the engine. The Kuznetsov Design Bureau, which built the NK series of engines, came up with a staged combustion cycle, putting the Soviet Union decades ahead of the United States. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, American engineers couldn't believe what they were seeing when they finally got their hands on a couple of NK-33 engines, the successor of the NK-15, and fired them up. There is an entire documentary about that, it's called The Engines That Came In From The Cold. I highly recommend you watch that. And while the N1's engine was remarkable, something else wasn't. So let's talk about service history. This chapter of today's Rocket Rumble is a short and decisive one, because the N1 was launched only four times and each attempt ended in disaster. Basically, the electronic control system available to the Soviet engineers was not up for the task of handling 30 rocket engines and they never did a test fire of the first stage. There never was a test stand budgeted for the Block A behemoth. With it, a lot of the issues the N1 encountered during its launch attempts maybe could have been resolved. The second attempt resulted in such a big explosion 
that it still ranks in the top 10 of the largest accidental non-nuclear explosions. The blast's yield was estimated between 0.3 and 1 kilotons. The Saturn V, on the other hand, did not explode. All of its stages were rigorously tested and the American rocket beast flew to space 13 times, 10 of which were crewed and 6 of which delivered astronauts to the moon. An impeccable service record versus a list of utter failures. This one is pretty clear cut. And with this we come to the conclusion. So, which marvelous moon machine wins this episode of Rocket Rumble? Based on the mission results, I think it's pretty obvious that it should be the Saturn V. But there are fascinating aspects to the N1 that make it a really cool vehicle in my mind. And its engines were ahead of their time. What, what do you think? Tell me in the comments down below. Researching this video was a lot of fun. And we're going to have a lot more fun when we return to future matchups. I already have the Apollo Lunar Lander versus the Soviet LK Lander lined up. And I want to do an SLS vs Starship matchup as well. Do you have any suggestions for this series? Again, let me know in the comments, I would love to know your thoughts. And if you like this video, or in general the stuff that I do on this channel, might I interest you in becoming a YouTube channel member or signing up for my Patreon? If you do, you get early access to videos and some bonus material, for instance me actually building an NK lander, and your name will show up here, together with all these fine folks. Thank you so much for your support. And before I go, please let me know what you think about this Rocket Rumble idea. Is this format to your liking? Should I change something? I know there are people out there doing more scientific videos about space like Scott Manley or dive really deep into the nitty gritty of engineering like everyday astronaut does. But I hope you got a good overview and had fun learning something new. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.